Sunday, May 21st, and I'm trying to get my hive work done. I generally don't work a lot on Sundays. It's after church, you know, and I try to spend time with the family, but the kids are out of school, so I'm babysitting during the week, and it, I can work in the honey house with the kids. I can work in the wood shop with the kids. I can go to my dad's and things like that, but I can't really take them to work bees. Um, I'm trying to keep them, trying to keep their exposure to bee venom minimal until they're at an age where they can start getting stung frequently because I don't want them to develop an allergy. So um, they can't really go to the bee yards with me much unless they are suited up and gloved and they get hot and cranky and bored and tired and hungry and whiny when I try to take them with me. So I'm trying to get my bee work done today and tomorrow we've got a babysitter. So today and tomorrow I've got to, I've got to get rolling. These are the little nukes that I put into doubles last week. Gave them a gallon of syrup. Looks like they're doing what they're supposed to. Drawing that out real nice. I'll just top them up and then probably move the feeder up next week. That's a tremendous amount of bee flight. I don't know if they're on some kind of a flow or what. I can hope, I guess. So there's the bait. So there's the bait frame I pulled up to try to draw them into this box of foundation. It looks like they've started drawing on these two frames and maybe this one, maybe that one. Not much of a flow. This is a yard of production colonies. It's one of my drone floating yards. And we're about to find out what they're doing. I'd really love to get some of these green drone frames drawn this year it looks like they're just starting on a couple of them no flow or maybe it's just a trickle flow not enough for them to draw foundations split out of them on the 25th i pulled them back again on the 9th cups no cells on the 20th didn't take any action 424 they were on track they already had a, a fourth box on them i added a fifth on the second and then the flow tapered off Not one, but two. Hanging on the water. That makes it difficult. Hmm. That willow is the worst swarm catching tree ever. The wood is really weak. So while you're trying to saw on a limb, in the middle of the limb, it just breaks off at the trunk dumps bees into the water. That's not nice. So I just cut it down. I've had a few swarms over the last two or three years land in that tree and it's a headache every time. I've threatened to cut it down <laughs> last year and the year before. I finally did it. So I've got one swarm in here and I'm thinking maybe 
that is the hive that swarmed because of the other swarmings must have lost their queen. They're trying to go back in there. That's odd. It doesn't take long to work bees when there's no flow. Pop lids, look in the top, not drawing foundation. Haven't done anything in the last week. We're in the doldrums. If I was smart and had the ability to, then I would pull every honey super off right now that I could and then put foundations back on and feed sugar syrup. I've got a bunch of foundations, bunch of boxes I need drawn and they're not doing it on the natural stuff right now. I could still pull the foundations back off and super up again for sumac sourwood if we get it. Uh, I would do that if my honey house was finished. I'm gonna try hard to get that done this week so that I can start harvesting and maybe, maybe be able to do some of that. It's Tuesday morning, I'm headed out to my last two out yards. And um, yesterday was a, a disappointment. I've seen no progress in supers in the last one to two weeks, except for the yard that was working mountain laurel. So that's not progress, that's actually going backwards. Because <laughs> I've got to remove that, that honey from the supers and make sure it doesn't get into my honey. Um, so, man, I don't, I don't really know how to word this, but I'm trying to adapt to circumstances. And, you know, I, I'm trying to put these hives, figure out how to put these hives to their highest and best use and make the most of the season I've got left. So I've got a lot of these cap and ladder feeders, uh, double frame feeders. They'll hold a gallon and a medium. And I like these a lot. Uh, there's a couple different styles I've got. I've got the Man Lake Pro Feeder and I've got these mother loads. And I've got to say, I think I prefer the Man Lake in hive beetle country. I get quite a lot more drowning in the open well area of these mother load feeders. And then when the feeder gets low or empty, there's a wad of dead bees in there and high beetles will move in and lay eggs in it. It's, um, it's a mess. The Man Lake feeders have got a small circular opening that um, has a has a lad a plastic lattice that goes down in it and i think there's just less drowning in those this is an issue it's not a huge issue and it's solvable but it's an annoyance more than anything i have put some uh, straw and grass and sticks and all kinds of stuff in these wells to try to keep this from happening but I'm still getting the issue. I think it's gonna be a really bad year for hive beetles. So it's still pretty early morning, it's cool. Bees are not really flying yet and um, I'm about to make them really mad. I'm probably gonna get tore up doing this. I've got my, what I consider my hive is three mediums. This one and this one are uh, honey supers. This one I expect will have some brood in it. The queen could be in here, I don't know. Uh, this one, there's probably no brood in there. There could be a little bit. I don't expect there to be a lot in here. But we're at May 22nd, and what I'm gonna do is push all the bees down into this third. I'm gonna take all the bees off every frame and shake them down, and then put an excluder over top and put these supers back on. Bees will come back up through the super, but the queen cannot. And that will allow the, any brood in here to age out. If I wait till you know June 20th, June 22nd, even drones uh, would have emerged. And then I can come in and harvest these supers, take them to the honey house and not worry about there being any brood in them.
So what exactly are you two doing? Uh, we're collecting cockroaches. I'm collecting the ones on the ground. Well, that begs the question, why are we collecting cockleburrs? Because we want them. What are you going to use them for? I don't want you planting more cockleburrs. We got plenty as it is. Sorry. Sorry, but we're not convinced. <laughs> we're not convinced. I'm in the part of this paneling that I've been dreading. That piece right there is probably the hardest one in the whole building. I've got water, electric, electric, and a cutout for the door. But it's in. I've also got a mount for the sink that goes back here, so I've marked everything so I can get it back in. Next thing I've got to do is take all my plumbing loose move the behemoth sink to the back wall and then uh, get down behind it Hey guys, Nathan Duck River Honey. I'm on location today from my honey house. Looks a little different than it has up till now. Um, this is my 16th in my vlog series on building a bee business. And I feel like I'm turning a corner in, you know, this week and next in getting my honey house pretty much nailed down. Um, I'll tell you what's been going on this week on the on the flow because beekeepers always talk about nectar flows. That's what we live and die by uh, if you're making honey anyway. Um, the flow has been really bad. The past two weeks I've seen not really any weight gain. I haven't seen any foundations getting drawn except in nukes that I'm feeding. My production colonies just aren't doing much. And, um, you know, tulip poplar's done, black locust is done. Those are our two majors in the spring. Dutch white clover is blooming, but the bees aren't working it. Dutch white can be a major flow where we can make a surplus of honey. And now we are getting into uh, persimmon bloom and I'm um, seeing catalpa uh, blooming. Both those are minors, but we can make, uh, especially persimmon honey. We made some persimmon honey last year. This year, I don't, I don't know that we're getting much. If we are, it had to have started in the last three or four days. Um, nectar had to start coming in in the last three or four days. I haven't worked a hive since the, the weekend, and uh, this is Friday. I haven't worked a hive since Monday, or Tuesday, I think. Um, so I haven't seen a lot coming in. Um, Chestnut is just getting ready to bloom. Bees will kind of sort of work that. Um, they can get a little bit of nectar off of it in some years. It's not not gonna make or break my season, but it, it can be helpful, you know. Um, the next big things are uh, basswood. That can be a major flow. For a lot of places, basswood is pretty dependable, especially up north, but here, We've got a ton of basswood trees, and I saw two basswoods blooming three years ago, and I haven't seen one bloom since. So it's very irregular, but we have so many of them, they have to be blooming and reproducing. It's just they only bloom every so often, you know, maybe one out of five years or, or something like that, two out of five maybe. I did drive under one today that was setting flower, so... Are we gonna get an area-wide basswood bloom this year? I don't think so. I think we'll have some trees in flower, but not all of them. Um, so I don't know that I'll make a lot from that. Um, sourwood, I've looked at a lot of sourwood trees. I am seeing some begin to set flower, but it's just 40% maybe that I'm seeing with um, you know the little fingers on them getting ready to bloom. 
And last year, all the sourwoods bloomed. Every sourwood tree I could find was setting flower at this time. So I don't think that's gonna be that good this year. Uh, sumac is usually pretty dependable, but it's a moderate to mild flow. So um, I sort of shifted gears in my thinking, uh, you know, thinking about all this and the flows and stuff. And I think the best thing I can do is to try to get a good round of splits made and potentially use the mated, mated queens I'm going to harvest out of my mating nukes and make some big splits with mated queens, I might be able to get them in shape uh, so that if we do get some more flow this year, they can make honey. Or at the very least, my production colonies that I'm going to split could be in shape to make honey on drawn comb if I can get my uh, honey harvested and have empty drawn comb available to give them if we get any more flow off basswood or sumac sourwood or dutch white or whatever. So that's sort of where I'm thinking now. I don't know that I'm gonna get much more honey than what I've got right now. I'm expecting a trickle, if anything. So my mind's automatically going to, well, let's build bees, get ready for next year. So that's what I've been doing this week. Um, I've been working in the honey house after I got all of my inspections done. I did start shaking down some production colonies. Uh, I don't have excluders in most of my production colonies. I like to have, I've grown to like the queens to have free reign earlier in the spring. So what I'm doing now is I'm going in and if they've got a fifth, a fourth, um, you know, I'd use all medium. So the first three I consider the, the hive, anything above that is a super. But right now, almost all the fourths will have brood in them. So I'm taking the supers off and shaking all the bees down into the third box. Um, most of the fourths have a, just a little bit of brood along the bottom. You know, they like to put drone brood along the, the bottom cells of those center uh, frames in the, in the honey supers. And that is a problem. You don't want to extract brood. It clouds up your honey. It's just no good dealing with brood in the honey house. So by shaking all the bees out of the supers and down into the hive and then putting a queen excluder back on, I put those supers back on, the bees will come through and repopulate and dry that honey down, it'll be fine. And if I wait at least 24 days, any drone brood that is up there will emerge. Of course, worker brood emerges quicker than that. So in a month, I can harvest everything above the excluder and not have to worry about brood in my supers at all. I have seen uh, one hive that had four frames of, I mean, just sheets of brood in that fourth. Uh, so I actually pulled some frames up from the third, the outside edges of the third box and put them in the center and put the brood down into the, into the third. But most of them, like I said, have just got a line of drone brood along, that, uh, along the bottom edge of the frames. So I need to get through the shakedown phase in the next week. Uh, that'll be something I'll work on over the weekend and early next week. It takes time to do that, but you take steps to save steps. And taking this step now is going to save me some work later on when I'm trying to pull my crop off. Also, I had a couple of swarms this week, uh, aggravating swarms. I got one of them caught. Uh, they were aggravating because they were in a willow tree and the limbs break off that willow tree so easy. I am so frustrated with that tree, I just cut it down. I don't want swarms to land in that tree ever, ever again. And so I cut it down. And uh, one of them I got caught, I got them into a box and uh, fed them and they're fine, you know, they're locked in. I talked uh, last week about how I've had swarms that I get in a box and uh, gave them a, a, sh a frame of open brood and had two out of four abscond when I did that. Those are not trap swarms. I had some people misunderstand me on that. They were not trapped swarms, they were caught swarms. So they're swarms I took off of a bush or a tree and put in this box. They moved in, they covered the frame of open brood, and then they abandoned it and absconded and left and went somewhere else. I lost two out of four. 
Uh, like I said, when I catch a swarm, if I get sugar syrup in them the same day I move them in, I've never had one leave. And same deal with this one. I got sugar syrup in as soon as I caught them, got them in the box, and they're home. Uh, you know, they're committed to that box. And my theory on that is swarms are full of engorged bees. They, they engorge themselves so that they can make wax as soon as they get to a new home. And when I put them in that box and then I feed them, it's almost like I'm super engorging those bees. And engorged bees just make wax. I mean, you, you shove food in a bee and you put enough of it in them and wax starts coming out of their bellies. It's just how it works. So by super engorging these bees, I think it forces them to draw wax that first night uh, that they're locked up in there. And once they have comb and are building, investing resources into this house, they're going to stay there. Um, that's my theory anyway. You know, I may not be the expert on this, but that's my theory. Also started setting up a cell builder. Uh, did that on Tuesday. I went through a box very carefully and was looking for the queen and I did not find her. <laughs> Cause I can, uh, you take a huge strong hive and I can almost never find the queen when I want to. Um, you know, I'll be looking through frames like, oh, there she is and see her and stuff. But when I, when I have to find a queen in a hive, it's difficult for me to do it. Uh, I did everything I could. So luckily I had time. So all I did was put um, queen excluder between every box in the hive. And I'll wait five days, go back on Sunday and just start pulling boxes, uh, pull a frame out of each box and look for eggs. Wherever the eggs are, that's the box with the queen in it. And then I can uh, do a double queen board, uh, double screen board split, put the queen on top and make the, the bottom queenless and get them fed. And then Monday I should be able to graft into them and uh, get my next round of queen cells going. So I've worked in the honey house a lot this week, enough that uh, I think I'm gonna take a break for a couple of days. I'm not gonna work in here over the weekend. I'm at the point where uh, I've got a little bit of finished electric to do. I've got to wire in some wire, uh, put some breakers in. So I've got to get uh, behind the, the cover on the, on the service panel and have that one last uh, wall panel to get in. And then I've just got to trim everything out and uh, caulk all of the trim anywhere it could leak and uh, got a, you know, just some odds and ends to wrap up. I do have to figure out how to cover the doors down here and trim all that in nice. Uh, it's gotta be, you know, washable, cleanable as well. And uh, right now I've just got the, the outer doors covered with foam, uh, spray foam. So I've got to figure out what I'm gonna do with them. And then I've got to get all of my tools and junk out of here and do a thorough cleaning and I'm done. So, I think I'm going to get done with this next week. Um, a lot of tedious piddling work left to do. Trim work and stuff is detail oriented, but I've got, I've got most of it licked at this point. I've got hot water working. Uh, I've plugged the, all of the plumbing back in. I've got the sinks back in. Still got to do some caulking and stuff. I see my faucet is leaking here, so I've got to get that fixed. But uh, of course the, the drains and stuff were leaking when I put them back in. They were fine when I took them out and then everything wanted to leak when I put them back in. But I finally fiddled around with that enough. I uh, got everything just right where it was happy and uh, got all the leaks dried up. So I'm glad to be at this point on this thing. This has been a lot of work. Um, the trim will go pretty quick. It's not that much work, but wrestling these four by eight floppy panels by myself and getting them in just the right place uh it's been a it's been a chore it really has so coming up like i said i need to get the honey house finished because i need to be extracting anything i can extract and have drawn comb ready to go if basswood or something else hits and we start making honey again i need to be ready to super up and capture any flow that i possibly can um, I may just go ahead and put wet supers back on hives just so they've got them. 
uh, you know, they'll clean them up better than I can and protect them and, and all that good stuff. So uh, that's probably what I'll do. I do have a couple of yards that should be good sourwood sumac yards. Um, I think they'll be more likely to catch that summer flow than some of my other yards. So um, there's a good chance I'm, I might move some hives around a little bit if we do start getting some flow. I'll definitely super up those hives and, and be ready to catch whatever I can. I need to start identifying hives that I can split. Um, you know, if I consider the hive to be three mediums, I'm planning on pulling one of those mediums out and taking one of my mated queens and inserting it into that uh, just to make a really strong split that I can get going pretty quick. And, um, you know, we're getting to a point where it's three weeks to get a round of brood. It's three more weeks to get another round of brood. And at that point, if you get another round, I've probably got a hive that I can get through winter. So the further I get into the season, I'm going to be fighting the dearth. I'm going to be fighting robbing and all these things. So I'm going to be, I'm going to have to make stronger and stronger splits the further I get into the season. And, um, you know, it's just sort of how it is. And I'd like, I would love to double from where I'm at right now. I don't think I'll get there, but if I can get to winter with 150 good strong colonies, I, I think I'll be pretty happy with that. I'd love to have some bonus small nukes as well. Got a lot more work to do on that front. It's, uh, it's sort of daunting. Um, I'm pretty happy with where I've been, where I am now and what I've done up till now. But um, boy, there's a lot of unknowns, a lot of work ahead of me, some things that need to go right. I'd like to say thanks to David Ball. He set up a monthly donation to the channel and every month I see that and, and smile. It really does help, I appreciate it. The question and answer this week, um, I got asked a question by Aiden Quick that was beyond my level of expertise. So um, I'm not gonna answer it, but I did forward that to somebody who can answer it, so. We had a question from Aiden Quick. It was on the series that Duck River Honey's Nathan Coleman and I did. The question was, awesome series, thank you for putting that together. I'd love to know if Corey has tried mixing multiple drone semen for artificial insemination in relation to polyandry, or does he do one drone for one queen. Thanks, mate. It's a great question. So what he's asking is basically, do we do SDIs or single drone insemination?s Are we using diverse semen from multiple drones? We actually do one extreme, which is we're testing whole yards <clears throat> and we're going through and catching drones from all the colonies that tested high. So, you know, it could be upwards of 30, 40, colonies at a time that we're catching drones out of. We put those in a flight cage and mix them. So technically the queens could be super mated, which is mated to an unnaturally high number of drones, um, which gives them way more genetic diversity. The upside of an SDI or single drone insemination is if you have a random population that's not testing high and one does, you can concentrate that set of traits. The downside is the queens do not last long, and those colonies are really lopsided and poor. So they're just to get a bunch of queens out of real quick. So, great question, Aiden. I'd like to thank Corey for taking the time to answer that and send that to me. He's a, a good guy, very knowledgeable, and I appreciate it. So in channel news, I do have one more video coming up, which is our beekeeping joke competition. Uh, I actually have some giveaways for that here. I'm about to film that. I've got a coffee mug from Ian Stepler, autographed. I've got a hat from Ian Stepler, and I've got a brand new Daydance smoker autographed by Bob Benny. Uh, we're gonna give these away uh, pretty loose terms on this best beekeeping joke so be looking for that video anybody's open to enter anybody's open to win um, international shipping might be a bit of a problem so we'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it 
Uh, I'm not going to pay 50 or $75 to ship something to, you know, overseas. So continental U.S., maybe Canada, I, you know, we, we're going to have to open it up to Canada for sure. Uh, internationally, we can talk about it. Guys, if you've got any questions or comments, I need questions every week. So um, please ask in the comments. You can also send an email to info at duckriverhoney.com. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next one.